Good evening. Welcome to the genealogy topic for the Historical Society of Harford County, famous and infamous people with links to Harford County. I am your host, Christopher Smithson. One of the most infamous families from Harford County, nationally known in their relations to Harford County is the Booth family. From the infamous John Wilkes Booth, the assassin of the 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, and his brother, Edwin Booth, who was an actor, as well as their father and their other siblings. They resided in Bel Air for a period of time in the uh, Tudor Hall mansion. The family's buried in Baltimore. They were actually originally from England and they do not have any actual uh, ties to other families here, but they, they're they probably one of the most well-known families in, in American history. As we go forward in this talk, uh, there will be no handout. Uh, there, this is basically a talk that taken me over uh, the last 15, 20 years putting together of different people uh, both famous and infamous that had relations uh, to other families uh, in Harford County. One of the most inf other infamous people in American history, as well as the world at the time during the Great Depression was the Wallace, was Betsy Wallace Warfield who later became Wallace, the Duchess of Windsor, when she married, who was then the King of England. The families that she uh, descended from, from Harford County through her mother, Alice Montague, with John Carville and his wife, Mary Phillips, George Goldsmith, Samuel Gover and his wife, Elizabeth Roberts, who were a Quaker family, John Hall and Martha Beadle, James Lee and his wife Margaret, and Joseph Presbury were all colonial families uh, whose descendants resided here in Harford County. Next, we have uh, the 37th President of the United States, uh, Richard Nixon. He is a descendant of several uh, Harford County families through his father, uh, colonial families, George Lytle. Daniel McComas and his wife, Elizabeth, Thomas Wadsworth and his wife, Rebecca Passmore, John Webster, Luke Wiley and his wife, Keziah. As you will see throughout the talk, multiple of these people are related to multiple other people um, that I will be presenting in the talk as well. If you have any questions, I'll answer them at the end. The next one is Barack Obama, the 44th president of the United States. Uh, his modern ancestry, all of his ancestry uh, that we have documented uh, with his links here in Hartford County come through his mother. And his family was from, started in the, in a modern time frame in uh, North Carolina, as they migrated there uh, prior to the American Revolution. And they, the families that they're related to uh, from Harford County, uh, as well as Cecil County is the Teague family, the Lofton family, the Mitchells, as well as the, the Wellborn family who also intermarried. So there was multiple, uh, Elizabeth who married uh, Mr. Mitchell as well as later marrying Edward Wellborn. So there's intermarrying relationships within uh, Obama's uh, ancestry. This was a chart that was done by John Harlan Livesey uh, back in 2009 uh, that we had put together for the Harford County Geological Society, uh, as well as some previous research. Uh, 
that was done by uh, W.A. Uh, uh, which was there, uh, uh, several years ago, and then it was modified from there. The first chart that was done was by the Harvard County Geological Society, uh, which disbanded uh, several years ago. Uh, they do have a website uh, uh, with the information on it, and the link is at the bottom. Uh, the next chart was also done done by the Geological Society in 2008 uh, of Dick Cheney, who was 46th US Vice President. His ancestry um, started modern, uh, in a modern Kentucky uh, and goes back here into uh, Hartford and Cecil County um, through the Hughes family, as well as the Pritchard family. Uh, and then, as you can see on the chart, he also is descendant of Marine Duvall. Um, Marine Duvall is also an ancestor of another Harford County family, uh, Tyler Baldwin, um, and, and their descendants as well. Um, so there, there's he has several connections here. And also, Marine Duvall is also an ancestor of Harry Truman's as well. Sometimes the technology is a little sketchy. So the next chart is very, very larger chart. Who you have here is actor Edward Norton, who played uh, in the early years. He played Edward Scissorhand, um, as well as his grandfather, uh, the late uh, James Wilson Rouse, who was a uh, developer. Um, here in Maryland, uh, as well as their cousin, uh, distant, uh, their cousin uh, Christopher Chapman Rouse III, uh, who was a musical composer. And they're related to a number of Harvard County families, uh, the Ashton family, the Keene family, the Baylisses. The Baylisses are originally from up in the, uh, New England, I believe. Uh, the Day family that goes back into the Beatles. Uh, so they're actually cousins of uh, Wallace Simpson, um, the Richardson family, another, uh, the Wilson, uh, Wilson family, as well as the Bonds. And the Bonds are also related to another person I'll be talking about, as well as the Lees and the Sacketts. Uh, the Lees are, this is the, these Lees are the, the Quaker Lee family that came down from Bucks County, Pennsylvania, uh, into Harford County prior to the revolution. So they have a number of families that they're tied to uh, over the years. So, and there was a few families that we didn't trace on here, like the Halls and the, uh, the Robinsons. So. The next one is a new one I, I recently discovered. Um, when I was attempting to join uh, a group called the Nine, where you have to be a collateral or direct descendant of one of the Supreme Court justices. And uh, we, through research, I was able to discover that Potter Stewart, uh, who was associate justice on the Supreme Court, um, was a descendant of several uh, Colonial Harford County families through his father, who, who was also the mayor of Cincinnati, as well as an associate justice on the Ohio Supreme Court. So that's a picture of Associate Justice Potter Stewart, as well as his father, James Garfield Stewart. And they are descendants of uh, Daniel Scott and Gene Johnson, uh, John Johnson and Deborah, that's the parents of Gene Johnson, Christopher Durbin and Mary, also the Mitchell family. So they also have ties to uh, Barack Obama, um, as well as through the Teagues, uh, the Lytton family, um, as well as uh, John Webster, related to the, to the other ones. And then we also have here uh, John Hawkins and his wife, Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca was the, 
the data on Rebecca is probably documented very well. She was actually married four different times and has descendants from four different husbands, um, spanning a lot of Northern Hereford County families. Probably one of the most pictorial families of Hereford County that has a lot of photographs or portraits done of them is the Archer family. Uh, in your upper uh, left-hand corner where my cursor is, is Dr. John Archer. And the rest of these are in his lower uh, left-hand side is his son, um, Stevenson Archer, his grandson, Stevenson Archer, The next gentleman is George Chamberlain. And I'll talk a little bit about them in a moment. Um, the one beneath him is General John Archer with June. Then we have Stevenson Williams, George Archer, George Washington Archer, James, uh, General, Confederate General James J. Archer, his nephew, James J. Archer, uh, his father, Henry Wilson Archer. And we have World War I uh, Major uh, Robert Harris Archer, as well as his son, uh, Robert H. Archer, uh, Harris Archer. Who I did not include on here that were also descendants that we actually have pictures of is Judge George Lindenberger Van Bibber, as well as his uh, grandson, actually his son, uh, Dr. Armfield Van Bibber, who was a physician in Bel Air, and then his son, who was George Van Bibber, who was a um, uh, noted historian here in Hartford County, as well as Dr. Ar George W. Archer, uh, where I'm a cursor, he was also one of the founders of the Historic Society as well. The original uh, Dr. John Archer was a physician during the American, uh, American Revolution. He was also a captain of a militia company here in Harvard County, as well as his duties on the, uh, in the Continental Line. He was also a signer of the Bush Declaration and a U.S. congressman. His son, Stevenson, was the territorial governor of Mississippi, a U.S. congressman, an 1812 vet, and chief judge of the Maryland Court of Appeals. His grandson, Stevenson, was a member of the House of Delegates, the U.S. House of Representatives. He was Maryland state treasurer and later jailed for embezzlement, uh, embezzling state funds and pardoned by Governor Brown. Uh, then we have George, uh, I'm sorry, James J. Archer, who was a major in the Mexican War, a uh, and then later a general in the Confederacy, and then his nephew, James J. Archer, was in the Maryland Senate. Henry Wilson Archer was a member of the Maryland House of Delegates and later a nominee for Maryland governor on the Democratic ticket in 1883. We have Stevenson Archer, uh, I'm sorry, Stevenson Williams. He was a very well-known lawyer in, in, in Hartford County. Uh, probably one of the more well-known ones here is uh, uh, John Archer Lejeune, who they named Camp Lejeune after in uh, South Carolina. Uh, George Earl Chamberlain, Governor of Oregon, uh, Robert Harris Archer, and then Dr. George Washington Archer, and then George Archer, the architect. If you have ties to this family, it, it's a very during their during their time they have a very large. They were either doctors or lawyers or politicians. And, and still today, there's there's still some family members still in in 
one of those fields, whether they're doctor, whichever. And where, where Dr. Archer is buried along with, there's now seven or eight generations of that family buried in one cemetery at Churchville Presbyterian. The next person is uh, talked about is uh, the Ripken family. Uh, the more well-known uh, for uh, Cal Ripken Jr. as well as senior with the Baltimore Orioles. Um, they have a lot of ancestry uh, here in Hartford County. Um, Cal Sr. is of both uh, German and uh, Irish descent. Um, and the, fam the family, of course, the Ripken family, uh, Cal Sr.'s mother was an Oliver. They were originally from Ireland, um, as well as the McCoys and the Stupner family from Germany, uh, as well as the uh, Weichergram family uh, and the Dehean family uh, were also German as well. So all his... Per all Cal Ripken Jr.'s paternal ancestry is all recent, uh, both German and Irish. His maternal side through his mother, who was the late Vi, uh, Vi Gross uh, Ripken, who died a few years ago, um, a lot of her ancestry is old colonial Maryland families, as well as some other areas as well. Uh, of course, the Grosses were from Alsace Al and also Germany. Uh, Conrad was from Hessen German. Um, the, uh, my mother was a Wallace. That's a colonial family uh, from Kent County, Maryland. Uh, the Chu family was original settlers on the uh, for Jamestown, um, as well as. Uh, they're also descendants of Daniel Scott and Gene Johnson, which makes them cousins to um, several others that I've talked about, as uh, well as John Johnson and Deborah, also descendants of Matthew Howard, a well-known colonial uh, resident, um, the Dorseys, John Baldwin. Um, one person I do not have on here is John Wilkins, who was also a Jamestown passenger. Uh, they also descend from Richard Johns and Elizabeth Kingsley, who were also Quakers. Um, Joseph Pressberry. Um, and then Dr. Timothy Stidham, who was the colonial physician uh, for the old Swiss colony in Delaware. A lot of people descend from him, and they're actually he's actually an ancestor of Mary Stedham, who I have there, who married William Forward. Who we have here is the late Mary Eliza Waters Brist uh, Risto, who was the first woman in Maryland to serve in the House of Delegates, the State Senate, the first woman clerk of court for Hartford County. Um, and today she actually has, uh, in, in 1980, uh, they dedicated the district court here in Hartford County in her honor. So she has the building named for her. Uh, she was very prestigious for her time, very well known. And she descends from the Risto family as well as the Amoses, uh, among other families. Uh, and she's a in 1975, uh, Alexander Rigdon. So she has a lot of roots here, uh, not only here, as well as colonial uh, Baltimore County uh, families as well. Next, we have uh, Civil War Governor Augustus Williamson Bradford, who was actually born in Bel Air. He is a descendant of uh, immigrant Peter Bond. He was an immigrant of the Bond family here in Maryland. Um, he's also a descendant of 
another signer of the Bush Declaration, William Bradford. Um, so he had a lot of uh, original roots here in Hartford County, and there's still there's still some of the family around here uh, in 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 and around Hartford County. Next one is another governor. Uh, this was actually Shadrach Bond. He was actually a distant cousin of Governor Bradford's. Uh, Shadrach was actually the first governor to be elected in Illinois. He was also a descendant of Peter Bond. Another Maryland governor, the third Maryland governor, they had ties to Hartford County was William Peca, who was also a signer of the Declaration of Independence, judge of the U.S. District Court for the District of Maryland, appointed by George Washington, the descendant of the Peker family, the Parker, the Phillips, the Smiths, and the Martin family, and brother of Aquila Peker, who was another signer of the Bush Declaration. Probably one of the most infamous people, or the one of the most interesting people in the last 10 years or so that we have received inquiries about to the historical society was a woman by the name of Hannah Coulter. And she grew up in the fourth district around the Jarrettsville area. And during her life, she had disguised herself as a man. And the topic of discussion of her has had a lot of scholars, historical scholars, uh, writing numerous articles about her, uh, people coming to the historical society to research about her early life. Um, she was a daughter of Martin Calder and Nancy Slate, who were up in the Fourth District. And one of the most documented cases of her life is when she turned around and married her second wife, um, married another woman in 1888, uh, Catherine Beale. And that became a widespread newspaper account during that time. Through evidence, we were able to discover that not only was she married to her, which was later, um, that marriage was later annulled. Uh, she was previously married to another Jarrettsville woman named Emma Robinson in 1872. And then later to a woman from Baltimore uh, named Sarah Kemp. Um, and Hannah went by the name of Henry, Howard, and Hiram Calder, as we were able to find through the records. Um, and then she later died in Florida in 1914. Uh, today, she's buried in Florida in a unmarked grave. Um, the only one that has a stone is Sarah, and she died in 1910. Um, and it's one of the, the most interesting stories that we've, people, every once in a while, we get inquiries on this. And uh, since then, we've been piecing together other things. And Hannah was descended of the Calder family. Her father was actually an illegitimate child of Naomi Calder and a guy by the name of Hanway. And then on her mother's side, she's related to uh, the Slades, the McComases, and the Whitaker family. So she would actually be a distant cousin of, of Richard Nixon, as well as others that I talked about. So in the past several years putting this together, there's always families that we are missing, that we find out that there's famous or infamous descendants. So. Uh, what I'm looking for is if there's anyone out there that, that does have information on other people that 
that you were willing to be uh, share information about, we would be more than willing. Uh, please contact me. Um, there's a lot of families out there that descendants out there that we don't realize that they are descendants uh, with a lot of the colonial families that we've had here. Uh, some moved away. Uh, so if you do know of other ones, uh, look forward to hearing from you. With that, uh, let me see if we have any any further questions from people? Okay, this question is from Jim Schaub about the Karens who shot a guy. Uh, that was a woman by the name of Martha Karens. Um, in 1869, um, uh, her Karens family was a, a Confederate family uh, from the Jarrettsville area. And um, she happened to be in a relationship with a gentleman by the name of Nicholas McComas. Um, and who she had a child with. Um, they did not marry. And for whatever reason, they, they got into a disagreement or something and she pulled him out of the church for a hotel and onto the porch and shot him. Um, she was later acquitted of the charges. Um, he died. Nicholas McComas died from his uh, wounds. Uh, he's buried at Bethel Cemetery. Um, Martha later lived on, and she's actually buried there as well. And they're buried about two rows over from each other. Um, her son, their son, Chester, was a bartender in Baltimore. And when Martha died, the, uh, according to the newspaper articles and the other things that we were able to discover was that um, they asked Chester if he wanted any of his mother's stuff and said no. Uh, so there was a bit of a hardship with what actually happened. Um, there was also, I believe, a... Um, a bastardy case written uh, involving uh, the birth of Chester. Um, so it's, it's one of those things, one of the, in the Northern part of the County, it's one of the stories. Uh, recently they've started doing cemetery tours of Bethel Cemetery. Um, and that's one of the hot topics of discussion. Um, we did a lecture several years ago about that and actually had members of both sides of the family um, in a panel discussion. So, uh, so the next question is, uh, what was the last name of the person who did uh, the bomber chart? That was John Harlan Livesey, L-I-V-E-Z-E-Y. So that's the end of our uh, discussion for this evening. Our next topic will be next month on May the 11th at 7 p.m. Uh, the topic uh, then will be on military records. I will be uh, hosting that discussion uh, on behalf of Mary Swears, uh, who originally was uh, to give that lecture. I will be giving that lecture in, on behalf of her. So if anyone doesn't have any, any further comments or thank you all for attending have a good evening look forward to seeing all of you on may the 11th at 7 p.m for the military records discussion thank you